Hey, hey everyone. My name is Tiffany Dawson and I am an independent consultant with The Pampered Chef. And I am so excited to share with all of you some basic wine knowledge, discuss some popular food pairings, and share a few of my personal recommendations for this wine and dine workshop. So first, let's take a look at a few of the essential wine tools that you need. Now it all starts with a wine bottle opener. And this is kind of the most popular that people have that will remove the cork for you. So whether it's a natural or a synthetic cork, this will do that work for you. Some bottles have a tear strip around the top that make easy access to the cork whereas other ones don't have that. And so with those, you're gonna need some type of foil cutter and these come in different shapes and sizes, but oftentimes will pair with that basic wine opener. Now, for those of you not wanting to use a lot of muscle power, check out the electric wine opener. Super easy to use and perfect for those situations. That's also rechargeable and can be used multiple times before it needs to be plugged back into the wall. So really awesome. For those of you that find yourself on the go a lot, you can get a cheek storage bag that comes with these amazing wine tumblers. Uh, these are awesome. They have a double wall insulation here that will keep hot beverages hot and cold beverages cold. So not only are they great for wine, but also for beer, cocktails, pop, iced tea, water, you name it. Whatever beverage satisfies your thirst, this will do the trick for you, hot or cold. And for those of you that are primarily red wine drinkers, you may need an aerator. So instead of pouring that bottle of wine into a decanter, letting it aerate naturally over time, you can just stick this aerator in the top of that bottle and that red wine will get aerated as it's pouring through right into your glass, ready to drink right away. No need to give it time to breathe naturally on the counter. So pretty exciting. So now that we are prepared to open and serve our bottles of wine, let's discuss some popular wine styles ranging from sweet to dry. So the most popular white wines that you will see in liquor stores today are Riesling, a Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, and Chardonnay. And you can find those all over. So Riesling wines are going to be very fruity and sweet with floral notes uh, hitting your nose in flavors of citrus and stone fruits like peaches rolling over your tongue. It pairs well with poultry, Indian foods, Thai cuisine, and German foods. The second white that we're gonna discuss is a Pinot Grigio. And these wines are slightly fruity and on the dry side with white floral notes hitting your nose and flavors of citrus and pomaceous fruits like apples and pears coating your tongue. These pair well with salads, fish, and mild cheeses. The third white is a Sauvignon Blanc, and these wines are very fruity and fairly dry. They will have a grassy aroma and very powerful flavors of grapefruit and exotic fruits, such as passion fruit. It pairs well with chicken, pork, fish, veal, goat cheese, and Mexican cuisines. The Chardonnay wines are slightly fruity and very dry with very strong flavors of lemon and tropical fruits such as pineapple. When they're oaked, there will also be additional notes of vanilla, toasted caramel, and a little bit of spice. Um, oftentimes people think of a Chardonnay as having that buttery characteristic, but that is not typical of your traditional Chardonnay. That's more of a modernized concept that has been adapted. But these pair well with uh, shellfish, mushrooms, cream sauces, and softer cheeses like a triple cream brie. Now let's switch gears and talk about the most popular wed, red wines from sweet to dry. These are going to be a Pinot Noir, Zinfandel, Syrah, and Cabernet Sauvignon. 
So Pinot Noir wines are very fruity and dry, but they typically don't taste dry just because of their low tannin qualities. Typically, you'll notice notes of rhubarb and cherries, mm -hmm. making it pair well with chicken, pork, veal, cured meats, French and German cuisines, cream sauces, and soft cheeses like brie. Zinfandel wines are very fruit forward and a little spicy. So imagine nectarines combined with blueberries and raspberries and just a little hint of sweet tobacco. This pairs well with chicken, cured meats, lamb, beef, venison, barbecue, Italian foods, Chinese and Thai cuisine, Indian foods, and cheddar cheeses. Uh, the third red is a Syrah. And these wines are fruity and dry with notes of blueberry, plum, tobacco, and black pepper. It pairs well with lamb, beef, venison, smoked meats, Mediterranean and French cuisines, firm cheeses like white cheddar, and hard cheeses like uh, Spanish manchego. And the last red we're going to discuss is one of my personal favorites, the Cabernet Sauvignon. And this is actually one of the top sellers all across the country for red wines. So these wines are slightly fruity and on the drier side with notes of black cherry, black currant, baking spices, and cedar due to being aged in oak. That pairs well with beef, lamb, venison, smoked meats, French and American cuisines, and aged cheeses. So whether you find yourself at a wine tasting event at a winery, maybe at an in-home party with a direct sales consultant, or you're just relaxing at home with a bottle of wine that you picked up on your way home. Most often, these wines are going to be paired with a charcuterie board of some sort. On these, you will find a variety of cheeses, some cured meats, nuts, olives, fresh fruit, maybe some pretzels and dip. You know, the sky's the limit. Anything can be added on these. They're super customizable which makes them perfect additions to your wine tasting. And every wine style is complemented by different flavors as we just went over with the various whites and reds. So it's important to have a variety of foods to go along with those wines as well to complement those flavors. So let's start with the basics. So one, the wine should be more acidic than the food that it's paired with. So typically white wines are going to be more acidic than red wines. Second, the wine should be sweeter than the food that it's being paired with. And again, white wines and rosés are typically sweeter than your red wines. And third, something to keep in mind, white wines are going to pair better with those light intensity meats, such as poultry and fish whereas red wines are going to pair better with those bold intensity meats, such as steak and burgers. And last, it's better to match the wine with the sauce versus the meat when you have those combined, especially with pastas. White wines are gonna go better with those cream-based sauces, whereas red wines are going to fit better with the tomato-based sauces. So when you're creating your own pairings, consider the intensity of the food that it's being paired with. Is it super light or super rich? Now, a salad, for example, you might think is on the light side, but we have to consider the dressing. Is that dressing on the light side as well, or is it on the rich side? So most common dressings used today are ranch and Western, both of which are very rich. Whereas a balsamic vinaigrette Another popular decision maker with the salad dressings is going to be very acidic. So you need to take those into consideration when pairing your wine with that salad. And if it, the intensity isn't very obvious at first, break it down into the three taste components of acidity, fat, and sweet. Pair your wines with those components and then make the best decision overall. 
So let's look at some examples here in my own kitchen to help it make more sense to you. So I have got a nice selection of cured meats here. Let me see those nice variety here of some prosciutto, soppressata, salami, and copa. So these cured meats are all going to be nicely complemented by a glass of Riesling or a Pinot Noir. I also have a ton of cheese sitting here. So we have got some triple cream brie and being one of those softer cheeses, this is going to pair well with a Chardonnay or a Pinot Noir. And then we'll work our way to the harder cheeses. So there is an espresso bellavanato here, and this is going to pair well with a Pinot Noir because of that coffee factor. Uh, those of you that are into the super sweet dessert wines, um, like a port or a sherry, this espresso factor or anything with chocolate is going to pair best with those dessert wines. And then we'll add a little bit of heat to the mix. Uh, we've got here a nice Cajun cheddar. So this is going to pair best with a Riesling, a Zinfandel, or a Cabernet. And we'll move on to our goat cheese. So a plain goat cheese often pairs best with a Zinfandel. Um, I also have a truffle variety. Uh, so with that mushroom factor, that's going to pair, still can go well with the Zinfandel. But because of the mushroom factor, it's going to pair better with a Pinot Noir or a Chardonnay just to have those complementary factors. And then we'll add in some herbs to the mix. So we have a rosemary olive oil Asiago cheese and a lavender cheddar. And with those additional herbs, these are both going to pair best with a Sauvignon Blanc or a Cabernet Sauvignon, depending on if you're wanting to go with the white or the red varieties. And last, we have a garlic cheddar. Can never go wrong with garlic. And that is going to pair best with a Zinfandel or a Cabernet Sauvignon. So we have got quite the collection here and a nice variety of cheeses that's going to pair with wines all along that spectrum, whether you are looking for something sweet, dry, white, or red. There is something there for everyone and your taste buds. So I would like to thank all of you so much for joining me for this live workshop. I hope you found it valuable and that you learned something new. I would love to hear your feedback and what you enjoyed the most. If you have any questions or you're interested in learning more, feel free to reach out. I am always available. Have a great day.